This video is brought to you by Skillshare. So the Audio Hacker Collective Databots just went live with a radio station powered by a neural net that procedurally generates an infinite bass solo. 24 hours a day, seven days a week from now until the end of time. Check it out. This <laughs> insane chaos was actually modeled off of my bass playing believe it or not. How is this happening? Uh, yeah, I'm Zach from Databots. Hey, I'm CJ from Databots. Hacker duo. Ephemeral hacking music AI lab. We make death metal with AI and other genres. I first became aware of Databots last year when they made waves with the radio station Relentless Doppelganger that procedurally generates death metal based on the music of Canadian tech death band Archspire. There are certain kinds of data sets that are gonna work well. Uh, things where the, the range of timbres are, is very limited, but within that you have a diversity of pattern. Death metal works really well because the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the timbre range is very limited. It's the same instruments the whole time. So this is why two hours of bass playing is really nice. I sent CJ and Zach about two hours of just me improvising a bass solo. And that would be the data set for the neural net to train on for this infinite bass solo radio station thing. My strategy was to use the same bass, same pickups, same tone, improvise bass lines over an 85 beats per minute drum groove, and keep everything in E minor so the end result wouldn't be too chromatic. Anything that's improv is gonna work well. Also, skate punk works well. Unlike electronic music, Actually, sample RNN does not work really well for electronic music. There's too much diversity of timbre. So what is this neural net that these guys are working with? What is this sample RNN? Yeah, it's, it's an autoregressive neural network that learns time series dependencies on raw audio. Cool. It breaks it down into chunks, like eight seconds long. It overlaps these, and so it can learn a small chunk of music, and it's just kind of like a flashcard system. It's just learning little bits at a time. Okay, so Adam from the past here. Um, I just got a bunch of examples of this like bass solo ran through this neural net. It's like a bunch of these samples here. I'm just gonna click one at random. It listens to it all once, tries its best to generate some, and if it's not quite perfect, if it's kind of noisy and doesn't have a lot of structure, it refines on the next time through. Like kind of flamenco-ish. We have to keep tweaking the data set, changing the normalization. Wow. Sometimes we, we double up the data set and invert the audio. <laughs> There's such a crazy uncanny valley there. Wow, that's wild. Like I don't really hear any of myself in that, but I, you can kind of hear my like bass tone. What, like how do you make music with that? I'm sure, I'm sure you can. Whoa, I have some ideas. Mm. This is kind of a funny ear training exercise, actually. Trying to grab what it plays, because I, I kind of hear what it's playing. Hear that chord. Hear that chord too. It's so weird because I'm hearing like little bits of things that I would do but played not the way that I would play them. The most rewarding part is working with artists. For example, we worked with a, a UK beatbox champion, uh, Reaps One. There's a music video <laughs> where he does a duet with his second self. <laughs> the Jacko harmonic lick. It's like warping it in a weird way. That's awesome. There's a chromatic note in there. We don't use 44-1 sample rate, but we use a lower sample rate because then there are just fewer predictions to make, fewer samples for it to learn. For the bass one, we started with 16 kilohertz 
And then we went to eight. Is it gonna sound good if we remove everything above four kilohertz? It still sounded good to my ears, so I'm like, okay, let's try to push this even lower. Uh, we, we, we've never pushed it this low. Um, and of course, this helps it a lot. Since bass guitar is a low frequency instrument, you can get away with recording it at a lower sample rate, which cuts out the high end. It also makes the files a lot smaller, making them easier to work with, which basically means bass guitar is ideal for this kind of raw audio neural net. Awesome. And of course, this helps it a lot. It helps it train much faster. The patterns it has to learn are much shorter because the number of steps has been cut in half. So, <laughs> It's very difficult to grab onto anything specifically. Uh, it's all very chaotic. I think the way that we need to tame this is we need to sample some of it and then work it into some kind of musical language. What if we just put a kick drum and then side chain the feed to like the kick drum? <laughs> okay. Why not? So many ways we can use it. On your own catalog, there's a lot of self-exploration ways to throw your own music in a blender and then see what comes out that you haven't seen before, new reconfigurations. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we take a snippet like... And then maybe we find another snippet that kind of works, like maybe this one. It's kind of sounding like it might work, maybe. This sounds like it's speeding up, so maybe we have to like go and do some Ableton warpy stuff to make it work. Yeah, like this. <laughs> Honestly, this is just like, ah. <laughs> Ah. Our architecture has 66 million parameters. Cool. Um, and that's, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the process of training is that it it is tweaking its own parameters. We don't really know what each of those parameters does. We have a very poor understanding of it. They call these things like black box algorithms, all these parameters and what do each of them do? It's hard to know, especially for like recurrent neural nets like this one. I feel like the clap should start coming in right now. <laughs> clap, 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 clap. <laughs> Entirely too much fun with this loop. I just spent a half an hour noodling on top of it. I wonder what else we can do with this. Maybe we can like build loops out of it, you know? Let's bring in those claps again. Clap, 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 clap. Step, you know, it's a it's an amplitude here of the raw audio. Each time step, um, there's a probability. You're given the probability, and then you're asked to choose what the next amplitude is going to be. The, the higher the temperature, the more uh, random. So if we turn the temperature all the way up, it's gonna sound like white noise. If we turn it all the way down, it's gonna get stuck, just repeating the same pattern forever and ever, uh, like it's insane. 1.0 is the normal temperature. Here on the live stream, we're actually changing it. It's going between 0.9 and 1.2, and around 1.2, it, it sounds like it splits into two bases. Sometimes you'll hear that sometimes, where it, it's like playing a lick, and then there's this shadow lick that's happening between the notes. <laughs> Uh, the thing that this reminds me of is the television show and like uh, book series, The Expanse. There's the proto molecule, the, the alien proto molecule that's like recombining all of the human beings into this like crystalline structure and it's very like body horror kind of thing as it's like deconstructing and recombining like human flesh together on the asteroid Eros. There are these like radio signals which are sent out and they're like captured by the crew of the Rosinante and I imagine this is what they would hear 
if it was all bass players on the asteroid Eros. <laughs> Just like this weird, uncanny valley horror of bass players. Oh, God. This is amazing. This is incredible. Where do you see the future of raw audio neural nets? I think that a hybrid of probably symbolic and raw audio might be the, the best in the future, where you might be able to have a little more control over the the exact notes and output, whereas, uh, you know, what we made for you, we, we have no control. It just does whatever it feels. Uh, it's kind of like a dream or hallucination. This neural net is wild, man, because this, this is, you, you would never be able to do this with MIDI, like giving you building blocks to then just like record and then play around with. It's like a loop generator, a bass loop generator. And this is something very new. Cause you could just like grab any one of these things and then like turn it into a loop. Like maybe it's this one, maybe this is the loop. As long as you just repeat it, cause repetition legitimizes, repetition legitimizes, repetition legitimizes, repetition legitimizes. Like I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> just repeat it. Mm. I love raw audio because, you know, with MIDI, you can't very accurately represent timbre. It's like, it doesn't matter what it is. It turns it into a groove machine. So that's really why we love raw audio because it is just great at all the different experimental genres that we're interested in. That, that was the whole premise of our academic paper, uh, generating black metal and math rock beyond Bach, Beethoven, and Beatles. Uh, <laughs> beyond Beatles. Right? Yeah, you gotta um, get beyond the Beatles at some point. Gotta, yeah. <laughs> In that paper, by the way, there's this great paragraph that speaks to some of these possibilities that they entitle, The Aesthetics of Neural Synthesis. While we set out to achieve a realistic recreation of the original data, we were delighted by the aesthetic merit of its imperfections. Solo vocalists became a lush choir of ghostly voices, rock bands became crunchy cubist jazz, and crossbreeds of multiple recordings became a surrealist chimera of sound. Pioneering artists can exploit this, just as they exploit vintage sound production. Tube warmth, 69 tape hiss, vinyl distortion, etc. Yeah, MIDI is gonna be great for classical Baroque music, but obviously it has lots of limitations. You can't imitate the sound of someone's voice. You can't have the atmosphere of a really nice black metal album. Raw audio is the frontier. No idea what this segment sounds like right here. This segment, no idea. Doesn't matter, just repeat it. <laughs> That's wonky as hell. Let's maybe make that a halftime kind of thing. were optimizing for this because you you tried to get this to sound the coolest for the longest was realism ever a thing or is it just to sound cool it's s sounding cool yeah <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> I, i'm 100 percent beyond that <laughs> and if it makes us laugh usually we're motivated by comedy you know, that probably optimizes to be not realistic at all. Those are probably the absurd things that make us laugh. And we may even prefer it to sound like a machine. I think we shouldn't make machines be too much like humans. Uh, we should make them just be absurd versions of us or a weird mirror of us, maybe, in general. Mm. So I like this approach to just like keep the machines being in absurd psycho land. <laughs> Guys, I strongly encourage you to sample anything that you hear from this infinite bass solo neural net and include it in your own music. And also tag me and share it with me. I I'd be very curious to see what you guys come up with with this stuff. This tech is very new, it's very exciting, and I'm very lucky to have been part of this project with Databots. These guys are doing things in AI music that no other people are doing. It's super cool. Go check them out. Go check out the Infinite Bass Solar Radio Station. It's so chaotic, it's so weird, and it's the perfect ambiance for listening to me talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. All right.
Yeah, really sets the mood for the ad read. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of classes for creatives and curious people, including subjects like illustration, photography, design, and of course, music and music production. One class that I definitely recommend that you check out that's full of great tips and tidbits is taught by the Grammy-nominated producer Young Guru, Learn How to Mix Music. Sometimes you have to adjust the threshold, but if I bring this in now, you'll hear the difference. With Skillshare, you can tap into the support of fellow creatives who are on the platform, who provide encouragement and communication and inspiration. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, so there are no ads. And if you're one of the first thousand people to click the link in the description, you'll get a free Skillshare Premium membership to explore your creativity. After that, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. With a, using a different net, not sample or an uh, one that uh, that can condition on, on genre. Uh, we did a fusion of funk, uh, like Herbie Hancock, par uh, Parliament Funkadelic, with Gent. Uh, and the fusion of these two things um, sounds incredible. So it has all the, the heavy timbres of Gent, but then that the syncopation mm. of funk. Uh... <laughs> that That's fascinating. So have you released any of that, or has that just been something that you've toyed with? or like We're like sitting the... on 13 albums of it. <laughs> Hell yeah, I cannot wait to check that out. <laughs>